Hi, so unless you've been living under a rock in the last week, um, there has been a lot of hype around uh, GPT-3 and then of course GPT-4, and also in terms of GPT, how it's very good at coding and it can sometimes create complete apps for you. Uh, and because I like to code in Flutter, I thought I'll just go ahead and check it out and see if it can generate a complete Android app for me using Flutter. So I have the GPT interface open here. I already have the prompt. Uh, I'm just gonna paste that prompt in here and then read it out to you. So here's what it says. Write a Flutter app which lists items one, two, three, up to 15. Clicking on an item should take us to a detailed view with the item as the title and the screen should say in a large font, this is the detailed of, followed by the name of the item. So it's a fairly simple, straightforward list view kind of program. Let's just go ahead and start generating it. Let's see what it says. Now it's giving us some instructions. It says create a new Flutter project with the Flutter create. I'm just gonna do that in a second. And then it's writing out the actual code that I will want to put into that blank project. Uh, you can see it's, the code is literally coming up line by line. So while that's doing that, I'm just gonna go ahead and create that blank Flutter project. I can do that from the, cre uh, from the uh, command line using the command uh, Flutter create, let's just call it Flutter create GPT. Uh, I'm gonna do that here. This gives me a blank project and there you go. Now, you, you have to know sort of how to do this, but there's no coding involved. This is just the boilerplate. I'm gonna to go to my code editor and I'm gonna open up the folder that I just created, the project that I just created by using the open folder. I go to my coding folder, my Flutter folder, and the GPT folder that I just created. And if I open it up, it looks like this. Now, there's a lot of files here. And if you're not a programmer, then you might be a little intimidated, but notice that we haven't actually done any coding. All this comes built in when you create a new Flutter project. Uh, the file that we're interested in is called main.dart. It has some code already written, but that's boilerplate stuff. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all of it. So it's blank at this point, like this. And I'm gonna paste the code that GPT gives me into this file. And let's see how that's coming along. It seems to be done. Yeah, it's all the code is here. It says in the my app class, which defines the blah, blah, blah. It's giving some instructions and that's it. You now have a Flutter app that displays a list of items, blah, blah. Let's see how it works. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this code here. It's copied, paste it in here. Control V, I'm gonna save it. Hopefully there are no bugs. I can't see any warnings. There are some warnings, but there's no bugs. And I'm just gonna go ahead and run it and see what it looks like. All right, so it's now, uh, I'm going to run the, uh, run the code and it takes about 20 seconds to run it on the Android emulator. <clears throat> this is nothing to do with GPD, this is a development thing. But if all goes well, we should see a code that uh, does exactly what we told it to do in a single sentence. Now, it is a code that I've written before and it, uh, yeah, so I know what to expect. And there you go. So it's now running on an Android phone emulator. It does say one, two, three, all of those things up to 13, but also if I scroll up, so it's a scrollable list. It goes all the way to 15, works perfectly fine. I didn't even give it the title items. It has sort of inferred by itself. It has also inferred all the items from three onwards. So I just said one, two, three, up to 15. That's what it has done. And if I click on one of these items, it says, this is the detail of three in a large font, exactly what I asked it to do. And there's a navigation back. If I go to two, it says, this is the detail of two. I can go back and it works perfectly. And you know, while it's not sort of the best selling app of the year, it is a fully fledged app. I could actually upload it to the app store right now and uh, it'll, it'll be there available. So that's pretty incredible. Without lining, writing a single line of code, I was able to generate this, uh, this app uh, purely from GPT. And uh, mind you, I'm still using GPT-3, not GPT-4, right? So there you have it, a complete app with GPT with just a single prompt. And because this is Flutter, I can use the exact same app and run it on an iPhone as well. Now it's running on an iPhone, looks exactly the same, still says item, I can still click on six. It says this is the detail of six in large font exactly. Uh, the navigation back still works. And so I can just upload it to either the Android store or the Apple, I, uh, Apple store, and it's just available. So what are the implications of this? Well, there's sort of several ways to think about it. If you are a programmer, for one thing, you might be a little worried about your job, but, but remember, this is a skeleton app, at least at this point. And so you still have to add a lot of detail to make it useful. You have to add error handling. You have to fetch some data from the back end. Uh, I could go into more sophisticated prompt and I suspect that it'll be able to do a lot of those things, but you still have to tie it together. And I think as the complexity of the app increases, uh, it's gonna fail more and more. Now, just for this code itself, for example, I tried it like uh, three or four times 
Uh, each time the code is slightly different, interestingly enough. So it's not copy pasting from somewhere, it's actually generating it. Uh, once or twice, I even got a few bugs, uh, one or two minor bugs, which I had to fix. So it, it's not sort of perfect, even for this kind of an app, but 99% of the time it gets it right and it generates it. So if you're a developer, it's, think of it as like your, your helper. Um, it'll just get you started, gets you a template, saves you like half an hour already because you're ready to go and you can now get to the more difficult bits of your, of your app. If you're not a developer, but you hire developers, then the productivity of your team is just gonna go up. And so you're gonna see that uptick in your productivity. If you're a startup guy and if you wanna do a minimum viable product for your app, uh, prototyping just became a heck of a lot easier, right? So you can just go from a sentence in your head uh, to a working app in like nothing flat. And that that is huge. So you can do a lot more prototypes. You can do a lot more things. I can do things with this app right now, for example. I can ask it to add uh, different colors to it and so on. And it's iterative. So I can just add one more prompt to it and it will make it, you know, changes from this point forward. So I'm just going to go back here and I'm going to ask it to add a red line divider between the list items, just to sort of give you a sense of what it can do from this point onwards. And if I do that, uh, it says to add a red line divider between the list items, blah, 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 we just created, we can, what, so it has the context, it knows that I'm talking about the same code, so I don't have to write the full prompt again. Um, and it, it basically is going to generate the entire code for me all over again. Uh, it's explaining to me as well. So here we have wrapping each uh, list title with a widget with a divider widget inside a column widget. And again, if you're a Flutter coder, all of this makes sense to you. But if you, if you don't understand this, um, it's just going to do all of that. Now it has not built the entire code for me, just the code fragment. So I say, uh, generate the full code list for, uh, or I should say, show me the full code. Show me the full code. Please. I don't have to say please, but I'd like to be polite. Certainly, he says, here's the full code for the Flutter app that lists item 1 to 15, blah, 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 with the red line divider. So it gave me the addition, but I said, you know, I don't want to be worrying about where to put that addition, so why don't you just give me the whole code? And uh, yeah, it says, sure, I can do that for you. And the advantage, of course, will be that once it's done, I will be able to sort of paste the entire thing rather than worrying about which parts to change and which parts not to change. It's quite interesting. It's generating this in real time, and you can literally see it coming up line by line. And again, it, it, it might seem almost magical, but uh, yeah, there you go. And it even says, hope it helps. Uh, let's see if it works. So I'm just gonna copy it from here. Copy code, there we go. Go back to the editor and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go and delete this code because I have the full code again. Paste out the new version and save it. And I'm gonna refresh this now there is a red line divided between all the items as promised. Pretty incredible, isn't it? <laughs> you can literally code with the English language now and it does everything for you. So there you have it. Um, interesting times to live in. And I think this is still, I'm still using GPT-3 for this. I don't have access to 4. Um, I think by the time we get to GPT-10, uh, we will be living in a very different world indeed. So keep up with that. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something and uh, found this interesting.